Happy Friday. Hi, Eric. Good afternoon. Hey, Sharon. How are you? Sebastian? Good. That graphic looks so cool. Hope everyone liked the, the updated Anything Goes graphic. Welcome to another afternoon of our program. We're glad that you're here. Thanks for joining us. Um, another week has gone by, and uh, uh, I think Sharon and I both agree it was a good week. <laughs> it, it was there, there was a, a collective um, uh, exhale this week um, as we were able to uh, see a nonviolent transition of power. Absolutely, absolutely. And the historical nature of, of the events really was a significant week for our nation. And then we look forward to a peaceful um, next four years, yeah. for sure. Hope that everyone's enjoying the beautiful sunshine. I know we've also got some rain in the forecast, but for right now, it's like gorgeous here in Long Beach. Um, yeah, so I guess that weekend of summer is over that we were talking about last week. Right. <laughs> last week, it was know. like crazy hot. This to, this week it's been like hot and beautiful. Um, yeah, but yeah we'll the see. rain's if, coming. If, if it rains, I don't I don't necessarily believe it. I'm, I'm looking out the <laughs> blue sky, so you know I'll believe it. I'll believe the rain when I see it. All right, all right. Do you guys think it's going to rain? Let's uh, we can take some some bets here. Feel free Although, to greet us, say hello in the comments, so we can greet you by name. Hey Jay, glad to have you here with us as always. You know, the temple doesn't pay me yet to be a meteorologist. So, um, <laughs> once they start doing that, then I'll have a whole graphic screen. All right, fine. You know, I could, I, I could point to the to the to the changing wind patterns and yeah. And I developed that for and for my um Torah Center Live program. I I actually got to do some weather forecasting. It was fun. <laughs> Did you do it with a green screen, or you just put up a you just put up a poster behind you? I put up like kind of like a share screen, so I had the weather you know predictions there. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> so who's online? Who's joined us so far? Who do we well, have? the thing is, you know, when people are watching and they don't say hello in the comments, we don't necessarily know oh, who the viewers see, are. Right. But um, Ruth Cooperman's here and Jay's here, so greetings. Okay. Ruth says she's going to do a special dance to bring on the rain. All right, thanks, Ruth. So we know who to to thank when it starts raining. We're really going to have a fun show, and, and it's going to be a fun discussion with uh, Mira Smelter coming up in just a little bit. Um, many in our community know Mira. She is, uh, she's around the temple a lot. She has a Torah Center teacher and involved in different programs. And uh, people know her husband, Scott, for his photography and her kids for their enthusiasm and, and excitement and everything that they do here at the temple. So it'll be a really, a really joyful conversation. I think so. I know. Lots of enthusiasm, no doubt. And Mira, if you're watching, you know, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> so, um, good time. There were things going on at the temple this week. I mean, it's hard to believe, right? I know we were all kind of focused on things at a national level, but there were things happening at the temple and lots of going on this weekend. Um, in fact, there's something going on, going on right now, right, at the temple? Uh, right, that's right. Right now, actually, if you signed up, you're probably not watching this on Facebook. <laughs> well, actually, Ruth did, so I don't know if she picked up her challah already. But we have our membership uh, challah drive-by event. Um, so if people took advantage and signed up earlier in the week, they can come by and pick up their challah. You know, people in our membership committee are dressed appropriately protected, but um, handing out challot. And also, if you signed up, you get uh, this week a special a Havdalah candle and a spices and um, things to to help you celebrate Havdalah with us on Saturday nights as well as as sort of a as sort of an extra um, special thank you for for, uh, for ordering the challah and then for celebrating with us and participating. So so fun. That's really great. Yeah. We had we we had we had a good group who signed up. So uh, those people will enjoy. Enjoy the, the challah and the, and the Havdalah sets. Sounds great. And then we're going from sunshine into rain, which seems appropriate for Tu B'Shvat, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, considering Tu B'Shvat is the birthday of the trees, uh, the two things that, that, that our, our natural environment needs <laughs> is sunshine and the rain. So um, 
it, it, it seems like all part of God's plan. Right. Yeah, we've got some fun things planned for for our community for Chuba Shvat. I know this Sunday we're partnering with the Alpert Jewish Community Center for a family friendly Chuba Shvat Seder and program at 3 p.m. And I'm looking forward to that. If you haven't yet signed up, there's still time to do so. So um, we'd love to have you join us for that program. People of all ages, are, of course, are of course invited. And then on Wednesday night, which is actually Chuba Shvat, um, Rabbi Fox, Cantor Haas, and I will be leading a Chuba Shvat Seder. I'm more focused on um, for our adults at um, 7, 7? 30. 7.30. 7.30. Thank you. 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, we had to make that one a little later just because uh, the rabbi also has his introduction to Judaism class. That's from about 6 to 7.15. So just making sure everyone can join in and participate in everything. Um, and uh, I'm sure we'll get... Uh, more a, a different a different perspective and, and uh, for, for that program as well. Um, yeah, and then this is actually uh, an exciting Shabbat itself here to, tonight at the temple. Indeed, both both reflective and exciting. We have um, a healing service that's going to happen at six o'clock uh, that we partnered with. Uh, the Jewish Family and Children's Service uh, to, to offer really something, a time for people to, to reflect and to um, be introspective and, and to, to have music and everything that helps them um, go through whatever process they're going through right now. And it, uh, it's, even though we're smiling and we're happy and, and, and we try to project that, um, there's, there's the challenges are out there. Uh, there's a lot of people hurting um, people are still feeling isolated, and uh, and it's really important that we offer the support to our neighbors and our friends that we can. And it's really it's really nice that we've been able to partner with JFCS uh, on uh, service and a program uh, to, to allow that healing to happen. Yeah, it should be a really really special time this evening, uh, and that is before our regular Shabbat service, which is starting a little later than. You normally do it's a late service and then eric what's happening after the service i know we have a guest speaker we have a guest speaker we have gabrielle levy who's going to be joining us um, gabrielle has an extensive background in media and news and and uh, she's been uh, working on washington dc uh, for those who may have seen her grow up here, I think she grew up. <laughs> she did. Mm -hmm. She did. So she is the uh, the daughter of Jerry and Joanne Levy, um, and she's going to be talking uh, to our community about um, about the Jewish perspective of the Paris Climate Agreement, um, and and. You know, now that uh, we're entering back into the, the Paris Climate Agreement, um, it's also fitting that it's Tu Bishvat. We're also theming tonight's service as sort of Tu Bishvat celebration as well as a celebration of sustainability. Uh, and for, for we as Jews, that's really important for us to not only be caring of, of how we treat each other, but also how we treat our land our, our um, natural resources and, 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 and if anything, temp, right, Jews are about generation to generation, the door of a door. Um, and, and what kind of, what kind of uh, people would we be if we, if we left nothing for, uh, or we left a deteriorating world for our next generations? Right, right. I saw a quote the other day that said, when, you know, when's the best time to plant a tree? And the answer is 50 years ago or today. Like, you know, your second best choice is today. So, um, yeah, we've, we've got a you know great evening ahead and some Chippewa Shop programming during the coming week, which should um, all be really great. I had the pleasure of seeing Gabrielle Levy when I was in Washington, D.C. last March with our high school students. We went, she went to lunch with us one day and she is dynamic and super informed about these issues. So it should be a great presentation. And then, well, everyone knows that Sharon is a great lover, a, 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 has a great appreciation for Jewish summer camp, right? This is true. And so there's a, a really wonderful community program being offered by HUC, 
that's a tribute to Debbie Friedman. And if those, for those of you, well, I think for all of us, not only those who went to summer camp or go to summer camp, but for those who attend services and, and uh, are participating in any way in the reform movement, we're really familiar with the music of Debbie Friedman. Uh, and uh, I know there's, there's, a, there's a huge community effort involved as far as the overall Jewish community in terms of putting this production together. And, um, and the temple also sent out a link in terms of uh, how you can view that concert. It's gonna be next Thursday at five o'clock. Yeah, so we heard this is her 10 year yard site, which is like really hard to believe, but I believe these big programs are in honor of that milestone yard site. So there's community programs, there's our own community programs, there's the wider Jewish community programs. Temple Israel, we're doing, we're, we're raising uh, the, the Torah Center is making Sadaka boxes, and we're doing a there's a there's you're having a, a tour center drive by next week, right? Yeah, on the 31st, a, Sunday, a week from Sunday, we have our a cereal box drive by for our tour center families. It'll be great to see people and a number of our teachers will be will be at the temple with us and we'll be collecting those for the food insecure in our community. So just, you want people to bring in boxes of cereal? Boxes of cereal, yeah, and anyone's invited. Um, it's not just for our tourist and our families, although our tourist and families are certainly being encouraged to attend and participate. So, yeah, boxes of cereal, and then we will deliver them uh, to places that need it. So if you're going by Smart and Final or Costco this week or ordering online, um, make an extra order for, for uh, donations because, um, like I said, there's so many out in the community who are in need. There's so many people who are hungry. There's people who are out of work. Um, and um, we, take, we take special pride in, in being able to um, give back and, and give, you know, and help the community and help our surrounding Long Beach people in need. So. Absolutely. Well, speaking, speaking of people who are giving back. <laughs> um, we have a Torah Center teacher who's joining us. Yes. Can't wait to bring her on. Should we do that now? Are we Let's ready? bring on Mira. All right. Uh, people who are giving back. <laughs> there she is. Um, we have a Torah Center teacher who's joining us. Yes. <laughs> Can't wait to bring her on. Should we do that now? Are we Let's ready? Bring on Mira. All right. <laughs> Thanks. There was an echo there. But <laughs> it was okay. good to hear ourselves too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now we know what we sound like online. <laughs> but while Mira is figuring out her sound, hi Mira. Uh, we I'll give an introduction. So, uh, Sean, anything goes. Welcomes Mira Smeltzer. Mira has lived in Long Beach since 2004. She's currently an English teacher at Wilson High School, where she teaches AP Language and Composition, 10th grade English, and Journalism. In addition, she is the head of the Arts, Media, and Entertainment Pathway. Mira started teaching at Torah Center here at Temple Israel in 2011 and is the 10th grade Torah Center teacher this year along with Rabbi Fox. She also taught 5th grade and 6th grade Hebrew and Judaica as well as was the Madrachim coordinator for two years. Mira is married to Scott, married since, married since 2005. They have two great sons, Evan and Mason. And with that, we welcome, hopefully all the sound things are worked out. We welcome Mira. Yes. Yay. Hello. Yay, how are you doing Mira? I'm good, thank you so much for having me. Well, our pleasure, we're so glad you can come on. So, um, we're expecting lots of energy as you heard from our, you know, in, our yes, wonderful- very interest. energetic. Yes. <laughs> you know, some uh, days you feel that, some days you feel like, you know, it's, you said it's maybe a week of a week of exhaling and now having having new energy and feeling like hopefully we're rounding a corner and moving and going to be able to move forward. So, um, how, so how are you doing? How's the, how how are you? How's the family? Um, we're doing good. For me, it's the week before finals, so finals are next week for my students. So you know, making sure they're all prepared, getting in all late work and things like that. It's funny we had Monday off um for martin luther king day and even though that at this week felt long i feel like so much got packed into this week mm -hmm. um, i feel like my energy levels were all over the place this week 
I was personally very excited about the inauguration and but scared at the same time because everybody was like concerned and not sure what was going to happen but then it all turned out fine and then we got to revel in the amazingness that was the inauguration day and all of the virtual stuff afterwards and I'm an English teacher so I've read that poem like 12 times <laughs> um watched it a few additional times so it's been a great week wonderful you know Mira you're one of those people that so that you is around the temple so often and people get to see you a lot so i'm sure our viewers are really happy to see your face again um we are missing seeing you and your family in person um and it's been a long road now right and we're we are coming up on the year mark of this pandemic and this really separation from so many people that we care about and we were accustomed to seeing you know you realize um, when it gets all taken away from you, how much those casual interactions mean um, to all of us. So tell us, you know, how how this time period has really been for you and your family. You know, um, how's everyone faring? So I think like so many families, it's been a bit of a roller coaster that we certainly all had a major adjustment period. Um, I am, you know, for those of you who don't know me, I am an extrovert <laughs> to the nth degree. <laughs> Um, so when those memes came out, I think that I would, they will forever be my favorite memes at the beginning of the pandemic that said introverts go check on your extroverted friends. They're not okay. That was me. <laughs> I was not okay. Um, and, um, that kind of has put me on a personal journey because when all the noise is gone, what are you left with yourself? And what does that mean for you and as a person? And so. I've definitely gone on an introspective journey during this time. Um, Has that been a healthy thing? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, really healthy, actually. Really excited about it. Um, I'm very late to kind of the mindfulness and meditation game, but I just got, but I've got there now. Um, and um, I've kind of been discovering some of the amazing I mean, obviously I love being Jewish and, but I've discovered some more amazing things that is captured in my religion and my culture and really started to look at various mindfulness and meditation and the beautiful tradition that we have in Judaism of those things. Well, um, interestingly uh, enough, I mean, <laughs> right, as far as when Judaism says you should even start studying Kabbalah and, and that sort of um that sort of uh thing within judaism it's right sure it's not in, in, the, like, like it's age 40 study it's until 40. until you're 40 so yeah you know. that's, that's perfect um i will turn 40 <laughs> this year so i'm a, a couple months early but not you're just, exactly you're so not late at all <laughs> i'm a little i'm only a few months early so i, I mean th honestly that's kind of it's interesting right like it kind of found me or I found it right when I was supposed to maybe like that, you know, hey, mindfulness meditation, things happen for a reason, <laughs> right? Like, that's kind of fascinating. Yeah. Um, you know, Mira, I know that, you know, you and your family um, are also busy normally, right, with lots of activities and work and exercise and, you know, sports and all those things that keep you and Scott and the boys busy. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think Eric could, and I could relate to that, right? busy families with lots of things going on, then all of a sudden, so many of those things were taken away from us. Um, what has it been like, you know, kind of to make that adjustment and have your family found other kind of interesting things to do during this time? Um, yeah, so, you know, children are amazing and I feel like they have done incredible. I mean, obviously everyone is dramatically affected, but I feel like my children, Evan and Mason, Evan is 14, he's a freshman in high school and Mason is nine, he's in fourth grade. Um, and yeah, sports, lots of sports and um, Evan does show choir. And so um, one of the biggest things you cannot do during a pandemic <laughs> that is transferred by breath is sing right. in public with people. So, um, so that's been really interesting and also just being active. Um, we've definitely done what a lot of families, lots more walks, lots more family bike rides. Um, 
Evan also plays golf. And since he's played golf, we all have learned a little bit more about golf. And um, a few times we we live near a park and we've taken one club and a golf ball each to the park and we're very careful around other people. Um, <laughs> but we find a target and we're like, okay, whoever's gonna hit it closest <laughs> to the tree. Like, you know, I mean, golf courses are open, but you know, timing and do we really wanna go play all nine holes or right, whatever? Exactly. Um, so, you know, it forces you to be <laughs> creative. Um, Mason and I have done some yoga videos and Evan and I have done some just YouTube workout videos, just trying to stay active together and, um, and, you know, learning to lean on each other a little bit more. So it's been good. Nice. Nice. Scott, so Mira, you, you like, so go, go ahead, right. Eric. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, Scott is with his line of work as photography. Um, has he still been able to, I know there hasn't been probably the bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah gigs like there, there used to be, but has he still been able to uh, uh, work with the newspapers and there's still been that, that work out there for him? Yeah, so he's a staff photographer for, it's the community um, insert into the LA Times. So it's the Orange County insert. So it's like the Huntington Beach Independent, the coast or the pilot in Costa Mesa. Um, there's another one in Newport. Um, so he is a photographer for them. So he's had his, you know, day job um, as a newspaper photographer. And um, the big thing for them is, you know, they're community based. So they cover lots of high school sports and high school uh, activities. Well, right. And that's an easy, yeah. And so he hasn't had that. So they've done a lot of other things, a lot more feature stories, um, things like that. But there isn't as much there. Um, and then, of course, you know, all the event photography is gone. It's starting to pick up a little bit now because people have found alternative ways to do things. Mm -hmm. um, he has shot a couple outside uh, bar mitzvahs, masked bar mitzvahs, where everyone is masked except, you know, the person reading Torah um, at the time. And then, you know, they, it's, you know, everyone figures out, but only pretty much one person is unmasked at a time. Mm -hmm. And um, so things like that, you know, no parties or anything, but just, you know, being able to have a service outside. Okay. That's good. So at least you've got, so you're both, you know, Working, working. we're so that part fortunate. Too. We are so, so grateful and so fortunate because we know we are, um, we know we're lucky and we know not everyone is in that same situation. So we were both able to, you know, keep working. Great. Well, as Eric said in, in the introduction, Mira is a um, high school English teacher um, at Wilson High School here in Long Beach Unified. Um, tell us a little bit about you know, the the challenges and the accomplishments, the sources of pride that you've been feeling um, over these, you know, these months of teaching online. Um, yeah, it's hard. Um, I know, um, you know, it's the, it's really hard for teachers and us because we just want so much for our students to be okay. And we so much want our students to succeed. And so, it's just a lot of time because we, I'm trying to be available for my students whenever they're available mm -hmm. because I have a lot of students who have gotten jobs and so they mm -hmm. work um, or they are helping their younger brothers and sisters Zoom for their classes right. during school time. And so they are popping in and out of their own classes so they can help wow. their siblings or cousins or whomever they're taking care of. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they're in high school and their siblings are in elementary school. So different schedules and I got to get my sister lunch. I got to get my, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it wow. is. So it's complicated. And so I want to be available to them. So everything just takes longer where you know, before at school, like someone could pop in and at lunch and be like, hey, Miss Meltzer, can you look at this? Or I have a question or whatever. We don't have that. They have to make an appointment and I have to like mm -hmm. settle, schedule a time or things like that. And so, and for some students that's at six o'clock at night or seven mm -hmm. or whenever they got off of work. And so trying to be available for them in those moments because that's what they have and they're trying and they are, they want 
to do well. And so I want to make sure they have that. So that's so that, great. So it's a struggle because it takes a lot more time than it ever did in school. And just, you know, getting assignments up, like just getting my agendas for the day for all of my classes up, you know, in school, I write it on the board and it takes five minutes. <laughs> It takes an hour in this environment because you have to put everything up individually for each Canvas class. That's just putting up agendas, right? Mm -hmm. like, that's not planning. That's not anything else. It's just getting them on the computer. <laughs> so, um, so everything just takes longer. Um, but I have so many students that are just in crazy situations, but are putting forth the maximum effort and doing what they can to get their education and things like that. Um, the coolest thing that I will say that happened um, was, and it came out of something awful, was um, we had in high school for Wilson um, on January 6th, the day the Capitol was attacked, um, we had an asynchronous day. So mm -hmm. students were not even in school. Mm -hmm. And it's such, you know, school is where we generally at that age, we decompress those things. We mm -hmm. talk about them with our friends or our teachers, either formally or informally. That's, that's where, when you're a teenager, that's where you figure that stuff out when crazy stuff happens in the world. And they didn't have that because we weren't, that would have been hard, even if we were in regular class in class this way, mm -hmm. but we weren't even in that situation. So that night I sent an email to all of my students and parents. Mm -hmm. And I said, we have an asynchronous day tomorrow. Um, from this time to this time, I'm going to be online. Please, if you want, we are, I said, I was really clear. I said, um, we are going to have a respectful, honest, informal, and free conversation where we, where there can be an exchange of ideas and we can talk about it. And whatever side you're on, no matter what, just have a place let's just have a place and i had no idea if anybody would come and in this environment you know you never know but i had 10 students come and i they were both conservative students and very liberal students and we literally had the most amazing discussion hmm. it was so respectful and kind and understanding and like it was one of those times where i saw a little bit of minds changed maybe on both sides or maybe not just understanding occurred mm -hmm. and like as a teacher oh my goodness like <laughs> what more could i ever want i've had students that have a respectful discussion about a very very complicated and emotional topic like it was just it was it was beautiful like that's the best word to describe it it was like a beautiful and we talked for an hour and a half it was amazing that's really amazing and inspiring that there can be discussion and respectful discussion and um you know and people wanting to share and share their feelings and and uh and, and i feel that that's great that you were able to create an environment where kids felt that they were able to do that so credit to you for, for yeah trusting you that it was that 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 was going to be a place that that was going to be uh, possible so so, yeah, I, you know, so our teachers are working so hard and um, all of you have been put in a situation that no one could have ever imagined. So um, we thank you and, you know, all of your colleagues that are working so hard on behalf of our kids. And I know you and I have spoken a little bit about um, perhaps some of the inequities of, of effort <laughs> that is being put forward by, by some teachers versus others. And so for those of you that are working so hard, um, we thank you. Well, it's honestly like, I don't know, I didn't come, I didn't come to teaching straight out of college. Like it was something that over time I found and it's, you know, you know, this sounds so cheesy, but <laughs> it's like, you know, I did other things and found teaching and was like, you know, it, it, it is my calling and I feel like so sappy and silly saying that, <laughs> but like, it's me, it's who I am, it's what I do. And I feel so grateful to have found that because I love it. I really, this year it's a little complicated and I don't love it every day, <laughs> but, um, but I do. And just that exchange with students and, you know, today a student told me something and I like banged on my desk and I was like, see, that's why I love being a teacher. See, I learn things every day from you guys. Like I do, I love it. Well, and you also have a history of, of really working with 
students in challenging situations. And, <laughs> yes. So, Before I mean, I even though even your bio said, you know, you teach AP language and composition, which, um, you know, maybe a different level and a, a, of students who are inspired and who have uh, aspirations beyond where they are. You also have a lot of experience working now with kids who are probably dealing with sort of those day-to-day -day situations that, like you said, they're, they're working, supporting their family, helping their, their, helping their, their siblings, doing all that. Um, yeah, so my 10th graders are just regular 10th graders. And I mean, even in the AP classes though, it's surprising what students will do to push themselves that um, they are even do in the same situations where when they unmute themselves and sometimes they do so only rarely because so much is going on in the background. But when they do, you hear you hear other classes and you hear someone cooking and you hear you hear all sorts of stuff. Wow. Um, so you know there's a lot going on around them and yeah so you have you have the gamut and i mean that's one of the beautiful things about wilson is you have everybody from every walk of life you could possibly imagine um and yeah no matter what the circumstances are students are dealing with crazy things right now um but yeah before i worked at wilson i worked at a continuation high school so i've seen all i've seen all the things <laughs> And have you, uh, have there been issues where, because you're also having to be a parent where your kids aren't at school all the time uh, and have to teach? Has there, have there been the challenges that have been associated with that? And, and uh, I know, you know, I'm fortunate that, uh, you know, Mel is able to work. She has a hybrid schedule, so she's in, in work, you know, one to two days a week. Um, I'm able to come in. Uh, to work typically either either most days or, or just after I'll drive the kids to school on, on their hybrid schedule. Um, but I know the mornings that I'm home and I'm trying to get work done and even just going through emails, it's there's so many questions, there's so many needs of, of your own kids, right, as far as getting through everything. So right now we're really fortunate. Mason is at school in at in Los Alamitos. And so he's on the hybrid schedule. So he's going to school physically in the morning. Um, and then he goes to their their kids corner in the afternoon um, while I'm working. And then after I'm done or depending on Scott's schedule, we'll, you know, go pick him up and then finish his homework at home. Um, Evan is pretty self-sufficient. He's at Los Al High School, but they're all online right now um, and have been for a while. So every once in a while, because his periods are different than mine, even though we're both online, like he'll pop in and be like, oh, what? Uh, and, the, you know, and, but, <laughs> and, but my students, they're hilarious now. Like now they know them. So like, I'll just have a student unmute and be like, hey, Ev, like, what's up? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's funny like they know and you know I literally work in our bedroom I have one of those like 1950s desks that years ago I actually got at like the Long Beach like warehouse where they have like old school <laughs> supplies um so like my desk is literally like three feet wide um and that that's it like three feet by two feet um and I'm in the corner like by my closet um so you know Scott will have to come in and get something sometimes and he'll just be in the background and you know <laughs> like students will unmute and be like hi Mr. Smelter like they're just you know <laughs> there's funny like and I appreciate their funniness like it cracks me up when they do that um <laughs> like I don't mind like I think it's hilarious so it's certainly zoom thing has certainly you know blurred the lines between personal and and you know school and um you know i think there are some some nice things about it too you get kind of a window into each other's lives that you wouldn't have been able to look through otherwise and i think also it, it helps us not take everything so serious you know there's there's a sense that you know i'm i am i am expecting zuko to bark at some point <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> uh, you know just because that's part of that's part of working from home and doing things <laughs> that way. Um, so so I think we all have to, and I think it's helped us all sort of be a little bit more forgiving of, of each other and understanding of, of everything that's going on around us while we're trying to focus on 
work and, and everything else. So right. Oh yeah. In each of my classes, someone has a pet that everybody likes. So in one of my <laughs> classes, a, a girl, she helps her, she helps her niece all, all day. Like she helps her with her schoolwork. So for that class, her niece is our class mascot. We have a class mascot. Sometimes it's someone's pet. Sometimes it's someone's sibling. Sometimes it's their cousin. So like in that class, she's our class mascot. And she says hi every day, like <laughs> when she's around and like, you just have to make the best of it because it is like, in one of my classes, this girl has this super cool turtle. So that turtle is our class mascot. Mm -hmm. Like, so the <laughs> turtle comes out and we see him and we say hi. And you know, that's, if you can't have fun in this fun, like we have to. <laughs> my nieces bought mitzvah a couple of weeks ago. Um, my brother-in-law's brother was doing an Aliyah online. Um, and during his Aliyah, his dog, came right up and was giving him kisses and it was like <laughs> moving the dog aside and it was, it's funny like I said it's funny and and kind of expected at this point yeah it's all okay oh yeah all the time and students like they're so scared of like they don't want to be rude or disrespectful like so many of them and they're just like I don't want to unmute because there's noise I'm like we know we know it's uh -huh. okay like, we know and it's okay. <laughs> Zuko knew we were right on cue. <laughs> he did such a good job. He was demonstrating for us. That was right an example. <laughs> Uh, well, we've been so lucky to enjoy Mira's enthusiasm and passion for teaching at our Torah Center as well. And I remember um, really so well, Mira, when we first met one another, it was the year that Temple Israel was under construction and we were in our temporary offices and Mira came in to meet with me about a potential Torah Center position. And um, yeah, we've been, it's been history ever since. <laughs> and I, rem I think it was that meeting too that she came into my office and we were talking about membership too. And uh, it's funny because I remember that distinctly too. Mm -hmm. That earlier today, I'm like, wow, that's, that's when you guys joined and became involved. And it seemed yeah. like you really jumped in with both feet. You know, Mason was a baby, right? Yeah, it was the year after Evan finished at the JCC. And so the JCC was kind of our religious home during preschool mm -hmm. because you know, that's just where we were in our life at that moment. Right. Um, we were all involved with the JCC and all the stuff there. And when he was done with pre-K and went to kindergarten, we knew we're like, uh, okay, no more JCC. We need, we need a Jewish home. <laughs> so, you know, in this, in the same breath, I was like, I need to get a job too. <laughs> so, uh, this is perfect. And yeah, I remember it well. It was like, a, it was like a, you know, where can I, where can I fit her in? Right. You know, let's, let's do it right now. Yeah. And I brought Mason with me. Mason was a, I mean, Mason was a baby. And I remember being like, can I bring my baby to my interview? <laughs> and thank God Sharon has children yes. because she was like, yeah, sure. Fine. I'm like, yeah. and then I, we talked, we loved each other so much. We talked so long. I was like, can I nurse in my interview? <laughs> and Sharon, Again, super mom. Yes, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Great. You weren't nursing when we met. I don't no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Although it was at probably the same time Mel was what it was nursing as well. So that's we exactly fine with it too. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mira has taught so many different grade levels at our Torah Center, which means she's gotten to know a lot of different um, families in our in our school. If you were if you had to think back to some of your favorite um, memories of teaching at Torah Center, anything that comes to mind? Oh my gosh, we did so, we've done so many neat things. I love I, so I get my absolute favorite. Torah Center activity we ever did was when we went to LA with the grandparents. Oh yeah, that was awesome. That was the most incredible day. Yeah, I um, kind of get the chills thinking about I, it. Yeah, you know, and it was interesting. Um, I'm going to blink on his last name now, and I'm doing it on Torah Center face or Torah <laughs> Temple Israel Facebook, which is bad. <laughs> but um, um, I'll Jay, help you. Um, Jay Iser. Iser, thank yes, you. Yes, I was about to be like best dad. Yeah, um, I couldn't think of his last name. 
he and I talked all the way up to LA and we talked all the way back and it was incredible. And I just learned so much about him and his family and his background. And um, it was just such a joy. Like it was just fantastic. Um, and I was just thinking about that trip the other day, thinking like a lot of those kids who got to go on that, you know, are, are now, um, they're starting, they're, they're getting older and it's, it's time to do that trip again. So maybe next year we'll try to get the funding for that. Oh, it was so incredible. And yeah. just because they're, like you said, it's something we missed, just those random conversations that you have with a student or one of the other grandparents or parents that went, like when we were eating popsicles, like <laughs> I talked to some student, we had the most intense conversation about ice cream flavors. And <laughs> it, I personally love ice cream. So it was a very good conversation <laughs> and it was amazing. And I just, you know, who do you, when do you get to have it? 10, 15 minute conversation with a beautiful young person about ice cream. Like, it's just <laughs> great. Like, I mean, just all those opportunities for connections that are different when you're on a field trip. We went on one to a Sephardic synagogue once. That was also mm -hmm. awesome. I grew up um, going to Sephardic synagogues a lot, but that's not something that you get a lot of. And so that was really, they're really fun, just fun as well. And, you know, you kind of feel like a, almost like a proud parent when you get to see all of your students that have graduated and have gone into college and are doing like amazing things. You guys had Miriam on last time and I got to be one of, um, Miriam was actually one of my madrachim when my first year at Torah Center. She ah. was madrachim with Ariel Schultz. Uh -huh. And like- Slackers. Oh yeah, they know, <laughs> right, right, right. I get a job at Temple Israel and I get like, <laughs> Not to disparage anyone else, but like I get Mich I get Miriam and Ariel Schultz, like seriously. Like yeah, that's those are one of the classes that it, it, but it it sets you up where you're, you're, you you think it's all gonna be this easy and it's all gonna be this great, and then you're like, oh wait. <laughs> There's oh yeah, they were my team. I'm sorry, I forgot the worst lacquer of them all, Sarah Cass. Oh yeah, she's really <laughs> trouble. <laughs> I mean, these three women who are forces to be reckoned with. Um, and so they were my madrachim that year. And, you know, I mean, I'm so fortunate to yay social media for all the things I get to stay in touch with them and just <laughs> watch in awe of their accomplishments. I get to I get, I get to take a little pride in the fact that I, they, I got to hang out with them for a little while at some point, <laughs> right? Like it was my honor, <laughs> truly. I mean, that was zero sarcasm. Hmm. So that's a great, and that's a great thing as a teacher too. I think, you know, just knowing that you had a little part because you, I mean, especially, in, and now you're, 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 you're meeting and influencing so many different young minds. Um, you know that you're having a you're having an effect, and and uh, you know some of them, many of them are hopefully going to grow up and do do great things, and um, you're a part of that. So yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, so there are so many there are so many great memories. You know, we get to do so many neat things as teachers with Torah Center, but yeah, Sharon, totally bus trip again. Let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds great. Uh, you know, Mira, you have been such an integral part of the Temple Israel community ever since you joined. Uh, I, I happen to know a little bit about your, where you grew up, which was a very different kind of Jewish community. Now, if you want to tell our viewers just briefly about, you know, what your Jewish community looked like when you were, you know, a child. So when I was much younger, we lived in Culver City and I actually grew up in a conservative synagogue. So my, I went to preschool and kindergarten at Adat Shalom in Culver City. Um, and, um, both my mom grew up, um, kind of, I would call it like East coast conservative, which is kind of like California, modern Orthodox, like, <laughs> um, and so, you know, Shabbat every Friday night, you know, um, they didn't keep complete Shomer Shabbat, but, um, but you know, they, there was Shabbat dinner every Friday night and with my mom growing up. And, um, and so then with us, yeah, we grew up in kind of in the conservative community. So I was really involved in USY, which is the conservative movements, um, like youth group, like mm -hmm. NIFT. And I was heavily involved in that. Um, and um, both my parents grew up in the Fairfax area of LA. Um, my mom's dad 
was my father's Hebrew school teacher when he was little. Like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> I, I mean, if you want to get completely stereotypical, um, my parents had known of each other when they were younger because they went to the same elementary school. But my mom had just come back from Israel and went to go get bagels on a Sunday morning in LA. My parents re met at a bagel store. <laughs> that's pretty cute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, bagel shop in LA. I enjoy bagels if anybody's <laughs> from that area. I used to love I enjoy bagels. Was... My parents met and I enjoy bagels. That's, I, <laughs> I used did to not know every, that. Every Sunday morning, my dad and Sunday I would drive to, to I enjoy bagels and they would go through the, they would <laughs> boil them and then they go through this rotating oven and I would get one right off the conveyor and we would share this bagel on the way. Uh, is it still open? No, it's now, we're sort of taken over, I think, by Manhattan bagels and different. Ah, things. Got it. I was like I all excited to try it. <laughs> all right. But Mira, then your family moved. They, you guys moved right when you were in high school. Did. In school? Yeah. So when I was in. Uh, so it's kind of funny. I went to a magnet school in L.A. and then um, we moved to the mountains. We actually moved to Crestline. Um, and I went to sixth grade for two weeks and then they said, yeah, never mind." And I got two more weeks of summer vacation and then I went to seventh grade. So I ended up skipping sixth grade, um, which is very interesting in hindsight. I thought it was the coolest thing ever in that moment, right? <laughs> um, but so then, I mean, there's no synagogue in Crestline, Lake Arrowhead, Big Bear, any of it. Big Bear is like mm -hmm. an hour, so there's no synagogue. So. Um, we ended up joining a congregation. They didn't have a building. It was just a congregation um, called Etz Hadar in Redlands. And they usually worked out of the YWCA or a church. And so that's where I studied for my bat mitzvah and went to Hebrew school and got continued involvement in USY through from seventh through 12th grade. Um, but my mom, who, you know, rather traditional was, absolutely not allowing her daughter to be bought mitzvahed in a church, even if there weren't any crosses anywhere. She was not having that <laughs> at all. So my uncle, her brother, was a member of um, a synagogue in Venice Beach. And um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to remember what it's uh, called right now. Contefilo or? Mishkan Tefilo. Yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jewish geography. Eric, yeah, Eric knows his synagogues. <laughs> um, and so, and then it gets even cooler because um, the rabbi there at the time was Naomi Levy. Yeah, that's cool. And if you, if you know like Jewish writing or anything about Neshuva, it's this incredible Jewish community in LA and she's like Jewish rabbi famous. Um, <laughs> And um, like, I mean, just in this incredible person and she, uh, and, you know, being a girl and I was bat mitzvahed in 1994 and there weren't that many women rabbis even then in the conservative community. So I thought I was, I had hit the jackpot. Like <laughs> I got to have my bat mitzvah with a woman rabbi. Like I thought I was the coolest thing ever. And I, anybody who would listen to me, I'm like, I'm getting bat mitzvahed by a woman. I get it. I get it. <laughs> like, and, um, you know, I just, it was amazing to me because that was just not something that like I, you got to see that much. And so, um, that was super, super special. That's really great. <laughs> and then, and then I went to Israel my freshman year of college through USY on a program, um, called, um, Nativ. And so I lived in Israel my freshman year of high school or college. And, um, and then I came back and went to a crazy Jewish school. I went to George Washington University. <laughs> um, and because I was like, at that point, you know, in high school, I was the only one, the only Jewish person in my high school, the only one. Um, and that's hard. Yeah. And so, and then I lived in Israel for a year because I wanted to blend if you're a Jew and you want to blend, go to Israel. Um, so yeah. So, and then I was like, I don't want to do that again. So I applied to, I applied to GW. I'd never been there, literally sight unseen. I knew nothing about it except it was in DC, which is where I wanted to go to school. And um, it had 
a Middle Eastern studies program. So I ended up there and got really involved with Hillel because, you know, that's what you do. Because that's what I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I move places and find the Jews. <laughs> or, or, or convert them. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, those that too. <laughs> I can only claim one of those. I'm sure there was others that you influenced along the way. And that was just the, you know, the official one, though. But uh... yeah, but that, yeah, actually, two of my college roommates ended up marrying Jews. So yes, maybe you are right. <laughs> so, you, you must you must have a way of, of showing the um, the positivity and the excitement about about Judaism and the enthusiasm, you know, you make Judaism exciting and enth your enthusiasm bleeds through. So, you know, it's hard to find that in other religions, I, I think, you know. That's, that could be our new slogan, Judaism, the fun religion. Right. <laughs> we'll have to like put you on a poster or something. Like, or, or, you know, anybody who's doubting whatever, we'll send them to you and we'll pay you a referral fee. And <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we don't do that sorry <laughs> oh, well and then um you ended up in colorado at some point right where you met scott i didn't i actually met scott in all sorry people who like this god forsaken places victorville um <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because after college um I, I was going to go into politics, but administrations changed. And I was like, I wasn't ready for grad school in DC yet. And it was too dang cold anyway. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm moving back to California and I'm going to go be a journalist. So I did that and I got a job at the Victor Valley Daily Press in Victorville. <laughs> and Scott, who was from Colorado, um, you know, when you're just out of school and you just go where the job is as mm -hmm. a journalist. And so he, um, two months before I got the job, he got a job as a photographer at the Inland Valley Daily Bulletin. Um, he started there in June. I started there in August. Um, and we started, we started working together. Um, and there's lots of crazy details involved, but I joke that I got what I came for and I left because <laughs> I only worked at that newspaper for six months. Um, and then I got a job at a different newspaper in Ontario. Um, so, I, and, um, and I was covering the city of, I got a job at the Ontario Daily Bulletin and I got to cover the city of Claremont and all the Claremont colleges and that was awesome. But yeah, so I always joke that I got the job at the Victor Valley Daily Bulletin, got what I came for, and you know, <laughs> then left. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll take this one. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> and then what eventually brought you guys to Long Beach? So um I actually so I got the job at the Daily Bulletin, and then two papers merged, and it was one of those last hired, first fired kind of things. Um, and so I lost my job there, and then I was struggling to find a job in journalism. And then at that, then I just needed to get a job, and I was like, ah, Hillel. Um, so I actually got a job at UC Santa Barbara Hillel, and I worked there for a year. Um, and they had this grant for my position and they're like, yeah, the grant's going to, well, we know we're going to get this again. Don't worry. Well, okay. So I got, I was there for a year. The grant ran out. They couldn't get it again. And so then I was like, okay, I need to go find a new job. <laughs> um, and so during this whole process, Scott's still in Victorville and <laughs> in Victorville. Scott's in Victorville, still there. I've moved to on I've moved to Pomona then I've moved to Santa Barbara and when I needed to find a new job um I like looked back at journalism and all sorts of things and I was kind of floundering and I actually got a job at the must doing public relations and fundraising for the muscular dystrophy association and originally they told me the job was in Santa Barbara because there's a chapter up there so I like was all great I got this job at Santa Barbara and then they're like so how do you feel about moving to Long Beach I don't know how I feel about moving to Long Beach. Um, and then at that point, Scott and I get engaged and we're like, okay, well, we need to be in the same, you know, zip code. So, um, you know, we talk about it and we decide, okay, we're moving to Long Beach because at that point, 
We knew nothing about it, but it was a great location because he was going to quit his job and have to be a freelance photographer. So it's right smack dab in the middle of LA and Orange County. Lots of newspapers around here all have a job and we'll figure it out. And that's how we ended up in Long Beach. <laughs> it's a great story. It's a story. Lots and, of and lucky um, us, right? Lucky, yeah. luck, lucky for the Long Beach community, lucky for Temple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, we feel really fortunate. We, I mean, we obviously really like it here and um, Temple Israel is our home and our community and our family. And so we feel really fortunate to have found it. And because I always said, I'm like, I'm not moving my children to a rural community. We're not having a, you're the only one in the high school thing. So mm -hmm. when we, when we moved here and, you know, we're figuring out what to do, like, okay, we're going to start a family and all of this. We're like, this is the place because they're not going to be the only anything anywhere in, <laughs> you know, this community, right. in this area, in this city. And that's, that's a good feeling. And you get to meet everybody and, you know, that's what the world is. So yay yeah. Long Beach. Yep. Yeah, yay Long Beach. For sure. <laughs> well, Mira, we, we have loved hearing more. I'm sure our, our audience has loved hearing more about you too. Um, our show is coming to a, a soon con soon to be conclusion. Um, and you said you've watched the show before. So we conclude every interview with a series of questions. And I don't know if you used to watch the actor studio at all. Um, Love but, it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, Sharon and I felt it was it was a sort of a fun way to to bring our our interviews to a conclusion and end the show. So, um, I'm going to ask you some questions um, inspired by James Lipton and and he said by Bernard Pivot and Marcel Proust and all of those. So, <laughs> here we go. So the first question for you is what is your favorite word? Pressure can. Can. Um, what is your least favorite word? Hate. What sound or noise do you love? I love, so I asked my students this relatively recently and I decided that it's the sound of raindrops on an umbrella when you're under it. Mm. Yeah, that's a cool sound. What sound or noise do you hate? Fingernails on a chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> so what, well, you've tried so many professions, you've kind of hopped around, but what profession other than, um, than your own uh, would you like to attempt? Professional actor. You're so shy. I know, right? <laughs> I, 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 nobody, I, nobody would be able to hear me in the back of the room ever. <laughs> Um, what profession would you definitely not like to do? Coroner. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a Sorry. <laughs> no, that's a good one. I just, it's, it's, it's very relevant now too, though. It's a, just, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I didn't think about it that way. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, last question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank we welcomed you. Thanks for taking us up on on our offer and, and joining us on the show. It, it was really I, I know Sharon can attest. It, what an easy and joyful <laughs> hour of of just conversation it's so nice to to talk to you and see you and hear from you um the problem usually with with mira is that like there's not enough time to have the conversation you know <laughs> or you're chatting with mira and you're like we need to kind of get to what we were going to talk about so it was really nice to have this relaxed hour with you mira and for our community to get to know you better and we um feel so fortunate that you and scott and the boys are part of our, our jewish community here in long beach and we can't wait to be able to give you a hug in person sometime very soon Thank you so much. The pleasure is truly mine. What an honor to be here with you. So thank you very, very much. You're welcome. And we, services tonight. I'm totally, I'm 
I like, I'm excited about those. So yes, it should be a, a lovely evening ahead. And we want to thank all of our viewers for joining us. Oh, look, there is Mr. Smeltzer. Hey, Mr. Smeltzer. Hello. Much <laughs> love to everyone. <laughs> Everyone, this is uh, Scott Smeltzer. So uh, thanks for sharing your wife with us, Scott. And we wish you all a wonderful Shabbat ahead. And we will look forward to seeing everybody next week for another episode of Shabbat Anything Goes. Well, thanks, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thanks for joining us. Bye, everyone.